experience the full power of the dark side. All right. Has the north side turned into the dark side? I was on here yesterday talking about the rumors about Ronald Chapman coming to the Cubs, and here we are, not much more than 24 hours later, and Raldis Chapman has become a Chicago Cub. Um, he was sent to the Cubs in exchange for Gliber Torres, who is a top 25 prospect, uh, shortstop. Billy McKinney, who's a top 75 prospect, is an outfielder. Adam Warren, who's a relief pitcher that the Cubs actually got back in the Starlin Castro deal during the offseason. And then uh, one other player, I forgot his name right now. Uh, it escapes me. Uh, someone not worth mentioning. Raphael or something, Crawford, something like that. Anyways, the deal's done. A four-for-one deal. Now, first, let's talk about the baseball side of it. If you just look at it as far as number of prospects for one relief pitcher that's only on rental, you think, wow, Cubs really just paid a lot. Cashman just fucking fleeced Theo big time here. But in the context of the Cubs and what they have and what they're trying to do, it's perfectly fine. They have a surplus of young hitters, okay? Chances are Torres would be blocked from coming to the majors anytime soon, and same with McKinney. Warren, I could care less about. I'm not even counting him as a part of this trade. He could be a solid long man in relief. That seems like the type of career he could have pan out for himself. And the uh, final prospect that was sent is probably just a throw-in. Okay, prospects are just prospects. They're unknowns, okay? Obviously. Chapman is not an unknown. He is the, if not the top closer in the game, he's the second best closer at worst. All right, you know what you're getting with him. And I know relief pitchers ought not to be valued that high as this deal suggests. But in the postseason their value is disproportionately higher, putting him in those high leverage situations. So I'm perfectly fine as a base, as a baseball move. Uh, the Cubs are still locked in at pretty much every position on offense. If Torres and McKinney turn into something, good for them, but who knows, we'll have to wait and see. Um, but they, Theo traded from surplus. That's what he does, he collects hitters and when he needs elite pitching, he trades them. I'm just glad he did not trade Wilson Contreras or Kyle Schwarber. So I'm excited this is, as a Cub fan, as a, a baseball fan, to see what he can do. Well, I know what he can do. He can throw 105 fucking miles an hour. Um, but I'm perfectly fine with the deal. I mean, good on Cashman. He got more than what he gave up for Chapman. So, but we'll see. We'll see how they turn out. Um, on the flip side, of course, you have the off-field situation with uh, Chapman when he was uh, accused of domestic violence against his girlfriend. Charges were ultimately dropped. Uh, as I said before yesterday, I'm not going to like root for Chapman personally. Like, I, it is what it is. I mean, a terrible thing what he did. I don't condone it, but I'm not going to stop rooting for the Cubs. I've been a Cubs fan for 21 years now. What am I just supposed to stop? because they got a guy that was accused of domestic violence. Or hell, let's take a step further. Let's say he was guilty of it. For sure, 100%. Charges were not dropped. Do then I stop rooting for the Cubs? I mean, what do I do? And you tell me, shit. So I'm just going to kind of stay away from that whole issue. I've seen people on Twitter go back and forth about it. I was tempted to interject and give my two cents, but I'm just going to leave it alone. I obviously don't condone that kind of behavior, um, but at the same time, I'm, I'm not going to stop rooting for the Cubs. So, it is what it is. Um, as far as the effect he'll have on the team, well, obviously he's going to lock down the ninth inning. Uh, all due respect to Hector, he should slide to the eighth inning. And Chapman not only will solidify the closer role, 
not that there's much solidifying to do because Rendon's pretty good, but it'll make the bullpen as a whole that much stronger. <clears throat> Everyone gets to slide down a notch. So Strobe gets down to the seventh. You can use the newly acquired Montgomery in earlier innings against lefties. Uh, same with Grimm against righties. It just bumps everybody down, and it's a domino effect with acquiring Chapman. The closer role is enhanced, is enhanced as far as productivity, as far as talent. The bullpen as a whole, as I said, is, is improved. And then that has a, a, another domino effect on the starters. Now, the starters, especially the Cubs starters, will probably appreciate not having to worry about going as long as possible. Now, they only go through six instead of, you know, Lester and Arietta and Lackey fighting to get through seven. It's okay, because guess what? Strobe's coming in the seventh. Rendon's coming in the eighth. Chapman's closing shit out in the ninth. And that will pay dividends later in the season heading into October, because those starting pitchers that I all mentioned are all in their 30s. So if you can limit their usage through the use of a better bullpen, and then on occasion, of course, they're going to go seven, maybe even eight innings. That's great, too. I think it will be a symbiotic relationship between the bullpen and the starting pitcher, like a healthy one, as opposed to uh, what the Yankees had, which was their top three relievers were pitching in every single win. So they were going to get wore out at some point, and their starting pitchers were just awful. So it wasn't a very good give and take there. But the Cubs starting pitchers have the ability to, to go far, or if they, if they have a good lead, they can cut back because now they can depend on the bullpen. So overall, this should obviously have a, a very positive effect on the Cubs. I really don't see his uh, addition, or the addition of Chapman increasing the World Series chances, you know, tenfold or anything like that, but it, they've, their chances to win has definitely increased by how much is, is maybe debatable. Oh, and the final thing that the Chapman acquisition does is it keeps them away from the other National League contenders that were vying for his services. That is another huge aspect to this trade. The Nationals aren't getting him. Sorry. Sorry for your luck. I never heard the Cardinals rumored to go after him, but Cardinals won't be getting him. Uh, if they're fortunate enough to make it to the World Series, another American League team will not have him. So, I mean, you can see the trickle-down effect. You can see the domino effect of, of acquiring Chapman, what it does to the Cubs, and what it does to their postseason chances. Having said that, I'm not going to guarantee anything that they're going to win at all, but I'm excited to see the bullpen and, and the team going forward from here towards October. I would like to think the Cubs and Theo and Jed, they're probably done dealing. I really don't see what other moves they could be making and how much more they'd be willing to give up. I don't see a Coglin and uh, Solaire should be back soon. Fuller, uh, Fowler returned not too long ago. So, I mean, the offense is pretty, pretty much set. Another starter would be nice just because you never know if one of the 30-somethings get hurt, run out of gas. But if this is all they do, quote, all they do, hey, <laughs> I couldn't be happier. I was on here when all five or six of you that listen to this uh, would hear me say, Theo, go get a lefty reliever. Go get a lefty reliever. I don't care what you got to do. Just don't trade Schwarber or Wilson. Well, that's exactly what he did. He got Montgomery, who's had an excellent year so far. And he's got, other than Andrew Miller, possibly, the best left-handed reliever in the game. All right, well, comment below if you have an opinion on the pickup. You don't like everything that they give up or you don't like the baggage that Chapman comes with. Um, hey, to each his own. I'm going to leave that domestic violence stuff alone. I'm simply going to continue to root for the Cubs to win. And I'm just going to keep it as simple as that. I'm not going to get on my soapbox and and spout about my morality and, and things like that. I'm just, Call me a simpleton. I'm just going to keep it about baseball. And uh, know that I obviously don't condone that type of behavior. Not that any of you, five or six people, give a fuck. But having said that, that wraps it up. Chapman apparently is traveling from Houston to Chicago right now. So who knows? We could see him tonight. Uh, Cubs take on the White Sox. 
Arietta's on the hill, facing some piece of shit for Chicago. Miguel, something or other. And I forgot. Anyway, we could see him tonight. Who knows? All right, until next time. This has been Riz on my podcast.